I would like to talk to you tonight about a very important topic and I know many people heard that before it's about forgiveness how do I forgive and because of the counseling I am doing lately and the Bible talked about it it is a topic that needs attention because many people are living in bitterness because of the difficulty of forgiveness how do I forgive someone that hurt me my beloved I meet with people that tell me that they have been physically abused or psychologically abused or even sexually abused and how do I deal with this how can I forgive that person and some of them think that the Bible is not being practical especially for those people that were abused by very close members of the family maybe a parent or a friend of the family or a member of the family these people are supposed to love me not hurt me and that's why when I found that Jesus is talking about this topic and saying in the Lord's Prayer forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespassed against us Jesus is not talking to sinners only if you have Jesus in your heart then you can forgive people that can call God father God our father because they will have the power to forgive however I have known many believers that are unable to believe and when they don't believe they are giving the devil a place in their life and they are hindering the relationship with God I want to clarify a point about forgiveness some people think that forgiveness means that I restore the relationship between me and that person that hurt me the way it was before no when the Bible is talking about love your enemy it is not talking about philia which is the love of like deep friendship but agape love a selfless love a godly love that's the way only way you can love your enemy but when someone have has hurt you you it, you can forgive them but it doesn't mean that the relationship will go back to normal a relationship takes two it doesn't take one side and that's why we find in the Bible it says if your brother or sister sins against you rebuke them and if they repent forgive them so forgiveness does not mean that I continue a relationship with someone that is abusing me if I feel that I was abused or hurt I choose to forgive with my own will so I know I'm hurt and that there was hurt in my life an injury that took place I acknowledge that but I make a decision to forgive forgiveness does not mean does not mean I go back and have a relationship with a person that is not going to repent 
And that's why we see in the Bible that when Jesus was being whipped and he answered the high priest, the Bible says one of the officials slapped him in the face. Is this the way you answer the high priest? If I said something wrong, Jesus replied, testify as to what is wrong. But if I spoke the truth, why do you strike me? So, there is a misunderstanding about forgiveness. Uh, some people think that you keep taking the abuse and taking the hurt and continue your relationship. No, that's not what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is when you make a decision to forgive the person. A relationship is something different. It takes two people to be in a relationship. So there are people that were severely hurt by others. So the Bible says, love your enemy, but it doesn't mean that I continue a relationship of abuse. Because the relationship takes two. So on your own, you can make a decision and intentionally forgive the person. You know that you were hurt, but you choose that you will harbor no bitterness or hate or a, a, or a will to revenge against the person. Because forgiveness is not a feeling, it is a decision. The peace you can feel after and the reconciliation can come later. But forgiveness will be in front of God where you make a decision in your heart, in front of God, that you will harbor no bitterness and you will not will any ill to the person that hurt you. And this is totally by choice and on your own will. You make that decision. You might say that's very difficult to do. Absolutely, I agree it's difficult to do. But with the Holy Spirit, you can do that. And thousands and millions of Christians were able to forgive. My beloved, a person can forgive someone who hurt him or her because they know that Jesus forgave them. The person that can forgive knows that he was forgiven by God through Jesus. What happens is when we get hurt, we, without even noticing or knowing, we hurt others. So hurting people hurt people. And some people can come and say, I never hurt anybody. But I want to tell you, sometimes you might not even knowing, know or knowingly do something that hurts others. So hurt is like a circuit, an electric circuit. And the circuit continues going from one to another. When you forgive, you break that circuit of hurt. So if you don't break that circuit, you get hurt, you hurt others, and sometimes you even hurt yourself. And the worst thing that you can end up in is self-pity. Many people feel self-pity and feel justified in how they feel and their actions, the actions they take. And I talk to many people and they tell me, you're not going to believe what happened to me never happened to anybody. It's the worst ever. Many people come and say, nobody on this in this world were hurt the way I was hurt. But I counsel so many people, and if I hear this over and over and again, how can that be? Each person feels that the hurt they suffered, suffered 
is more than anyone else could bear. They feel that they have gone through the worst hurt anyone can feel. In Colossians 3, it says, Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. So when you forgive, you are forgiving because Jesus forgave you. And you are acknowledging that you have done something wrong. You have sinned against God. You could have blasphemed or rebelled against God. And that's a sin. And some people, whenever something goes wrong, they say, why did you do that, God? Why did you allow that in my life? I used to tell a story about the cab driver who could not start the car. And he would turn around and say, oh, look, you've done it again. You're not going to help me. The car is stalling. He feels that God is against him. And many of us blame God for everything bad that happens. And that's not true. And many of us, as they get hurt, they go and hurt others. So when God asks us to forgive, it's we go to that electric circuit and we break it so that it does not go on and on. And as God forgave me, I forgive the person. So I'm not really going to analyze everybody and every situation if I should forgive or not. I will forgive as God forgave me because I will not allow my relationship with God to be in jeopardy. It means a lot more than anything. So how do we forgive? We forgive as a decision not to have bitterness against anyone or seek revenge against anyone. I am just forgiving as Jesus forgave me. What happens if we don't forgive? The result of unforgiveness can have detrimental consequences. It can have detrimental consequences here on earth and in life everlasting. Mark 11 says, And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them, so that your Father in heaven may forgive your sins. So we have to pay attention to this verse. And some people might come and say, oh, I didn't know that forgiveness is conditional. I thought I'm uh, forgiven by the blood of Christ and cleansed by the blood of Christ, not by forgiving others. Absolutely. We cannot be cleansed except through the blood of Christ. And when we look at 1 John 1, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So, does forgiveness come by the blood of Jesus or by confession? Absolutely by the blood of Christ. But you need to confess your sins so that you can enjoy the blessing of forgiveness. You cannot pray to God to forgive you if you are holding bitterness against others and unforgiveness. And what happens is the relationship between you, you and God is hindered and that gives a place for the devil to enter and ruin your life so the most important thing when you forgive is to keep that relationship so yes you are forgiven 
through the blood of Christ, but the enjoyment of the grace of God and the enjoyment of a relationship and the blessing of forgiveness that you that you enjoy that God forgave you all your sins is hindered when you are bitter and re and feel revenge and feel hate towards someone. So you need to ask God to help you. So when you say, God, forgive me, then you don't want God to say, yeah, but you are not forgiving others. You are full of bitterness. And that is stopping that relationship. So God asked us that if your brother if you ha has something against you, you reconcile first before you come in front of God with a pure heart. So you need to break that. You need to cut that circuit of hate, that circuit that keeps going on and on and on. I'm not telling you go have a coffee with that person and have a good relationship. I'm not saying that. You just need to forgive. It's a decision, like I said, the feelings can be dealt with after. And we look at the Bible and the story of the master that had a servant owing him 10,000 talents and he could not repay the master. And he said, I can't repay you. Give me time. And the master said, I forgive you the 10,000 talents. Forget about it. When that servant left, he met another servant that owed him a hundred denaries. And he went and he caught that person. He said, I'm going to make sure you end up in jail until you pay me the very last denarii. And he would not forgive him. A hundred denarii compared to 10,000 talents of gold. God chose that example to show us how we can be forgiven but not forgive others. Trust me. There is no organization that that goes around in life hurting and abusing people. We are the ones who hurt each other and we are the, the people that abuse one another. And that needs to stop. We can hurt someone and not feel anything. But when someone hurts us, we feel it's the biggest thing ever. It's just like that servant. Oh, look at this guy. He owes me a hundred denarius. I'm not going to leave him. He's not going to take my money and, and, and not repay me. When he was forgiven by the master, 10,000 gold talents, he wanted to throw the, the fellow servant in jail. And when the king found out, of course, he was very angry about that situation. So many times we do the same thing. We see how someone was so mean to us and how someone was so wicked. When we sin and do horrible things to other, we do scandalous things to other and even terrible things, but we don't see it because we are only consumed by what happened to us, not what we've done to others. However, God is just and He is loving and He forgives us. And the more we are so consumed about the hurt that people did against us and not feeling what we have done towards others and not recognizing the hurt we inflicted on others, we can never 
Come humbly in front of God and say, forgive us as we forgive others. We need that humility. I see many people that are so consumed with what others have done to them and they don't see what they have done to others or sometimes even themselves. You need to realize God has forgiven you completely through Jesus on the cross for everything you've done. So you need to know the measure of sin. You can't go to God and pray and say, okay, God, forgive me for the little mistake I did today or for the little lie I did. This is an excuse. This is not repentance. But if you come to God and say, I repent, I have no excuse. I am so sorry for what I have done. I confess my sin and I thank you for your blood and your forgiveness to me. This is humility and this is showing and proving that you understand the magnitude of your sin. And that's how you can forgive others who sinned against you. So from now on, I want you to confess your sin in front of God and the magnitude of your sin against God. And God is loving and He is just and He is merciful and He is gracious and He will forgive you. And when you understand that, you are able then to forgive others. So the first thing is to forgive because you have been forgiven. So I don't analyze if someone deserves to be forgiven or not. No. It, you forgive because you have been forgiven. The second thing is that you need that relationship with God. You need to forgive because unforgiveness hinders your relationship with God. Because if you look at how people sinned against you and hurt you and not recognize that you also do wrong, when you don't realize that, it is very hard to forgive others. So you need to be truthful and stand in front of God and confess your sins so that you can forgive others. The third point of unforgiveness is if you don't forgive others, you are going to hurt others. And you're going to hurt yourself. There are countries in the world that are famous of child abuse. And people get abused as children. They grow up and they abuse children. So they were abused as, as children and they grow up, not, can't forgive the hurt they have felt and the abuse they went through. So they start looking for children to abuse him, abuse them. A person needs to forgive because otherwise they are consumed in self-pity. And they are always saying, no one was hurt more than me. Just like when people go sit in a cafe and listen to music, uh, how hurt they were and how the world is an awful place and, and it's so unjust and just be miserable over their past. I was talking to someone once and he was smoking and I said, oh, you shouldn't really be smoking. It's not good for your health. And the guy I was talking to said, are you kidding? It helps me because of all the abuse I have gone through as in my past. But look, he's abusing himself and wrecking his own health. So the person that does not forgive and gets power from God 
and have a good strong relationship between him and God ends up hurting others and hurting themselves because hurting people continue to hurt others and hurt themselves you need to stop the abuse you need to stop the hurt stand in front of God and ask for help God I don't want to hurt others and some people don't even realize it they are hurting people in their own family their spouse their children I was listening to a gentleman who was talking about how his parents separated or divorced and that he lived with his dad he looked a lot like his mom and the father used to treat him very badly the father um, did not treat him as well as his sisters and really told him you're a, a loser you're never gonna amount to anything when that young boy grew up and got married and had children of his own he was so afraid when he had a son he felt he's gonna start abusing that son and he found he caught himself treating that son terribly just like his father treated him and that's because he never got over the hurt that his dad inflicted on him but he was a believer so he prayed that God helps him and to uncover what's happening to open his eyes and God told him you are putting all your hate and all the abuse you felt as a child on your new son and he repented and he treated his son so much better because there is a big difference between discipline and abuse that's why I'm saying forgive if you harbor ill and if you cannot forgive others it carries on whether you realize it or not whether you're conscious of it or not pray and say God I choose to forgive because you are the holy God that created me to be a blessing for others not to hurt others we are the children of God we are the light of this world that means without us the world is dark it will not light up you cannot be the light and you're abusing others or hurting others or mistreating others and that's why in the name of Jesus they make a commitment today I choose to be a blessing and to forgive others and be a blessing to everyone around me so the first thing I forgive because Jesus forgave me number two unforgiveness hinders my relationship with God number three unforgiveness makes me hurt others and hurt myself the fourth thing God with his heavenly grace and his power changes every suffering and pain into something good for me the Bible says you intended to harm me but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done so there can be things that you might think it is a source of bitterness in your life and sorrow but God has a way to change those things to blessings and we have seen many people that have suffered tremendously in the past and they became witnesses for God talking about God's love and grace to others because they were able to forgive and they knew God changes everything for good some people say what was broken can never be repaired 
Don't believe that. God, our God is a God of love and He is He compensates. He is the God of recompense because He stopped the devil and his plans. He, and why do people hurt each other? Who is behind all this? It's the devil. It is pure evil when someone sexually abuses someone and kills them. And that stuff sadly happens and it happens every day. We can't understand but we know as Christians that, that Satan is behind all this. So instead of thinking that a person or someone had hurt you, look at who's behind the scene doing all this. It's Satan himself using people to hurt each other. I was reading a story that happened, that really happened. It's about a servant of the Lord, a minister, and he had a daughter and someone raped and killed her. And the minister wanted to see that criminal and he went to him and he said, I want to forgive you. I forgive you. Uh, he was on death row. But the minister wanted to see him, to tell him he forgives him. And to present the gospel to him. Because the minister knew who is behind this. It's Satan himself. So the only way to get to get revenge against the devil, against Satan, is to take someone away from Satan and present the gospel to them and win him over to the Lord. And that person repented and gave his life to Christ. So the real enemy here is Satan, it's not the other people around you that hurt you and say bad things to you or abuse you. I am not making excuses for them at all. I'm not making any excuse for them. But many times we ask those people and say, how could you do this to others? And they go, I don't know how I could have done that. I can't believe I did that. There is evil, evil forces that forces them and helps them and powers of sin that make people hurt each other and abuse each other. And that's why when we make a commitment today that you will live for Christ, you become aware of these things. And that's why that minister, instead of going to gloat over that man that was sentenced to death and say, I'm so glad you want, you're condemned and that you're going to die. No, he forgave him and he presented to him the message of salvation. Forgive. Forgive and go and talk to people about Jesus. Present the gospel the message of salvation. That is the best revenge. That is the best revenge you can take against Satan and against the devil. And that's why the Bible says, do not let sin overcome you, but overcome evil with good. And that is the way to win over the devil and to have victory over him. I want you to know that our God is a God of recompense. Our God gives us good things. 
in Isaiah 61, it says, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind the brokenhearted to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and to provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of His splendor. So if we don't have forgiveness and our relationship with God is hindered, we cannot see the good that God will give us. God gives us blessings here on earth and eternal blessings. So your feelings now don't have to be great against that person that hurt you. It's a decision to forgive. And feelings, God will deal with that. The other thing I want to make a point of is that God has his way with evil. And that's why the Bible says, Revenge belongs to the Lord. You don't take revenge. There is a day where God is going to judge everyone. So leave what happened to you to the Lord. Because God is just. So there are six steps. Six reasons why we need to forgive. So number one is that we have been forgiven by God through Christ. Number two, unforgiveness hinders our relationship with God. If I don't forgive, number three, I hurt myself and others. Number four, God changes every suffering and pain into good for me when I forgive. Number five, God compensates us. He's a God of recompense. Number six, God will have his way with evil and he is a just God. So you need to fill your heart with the love of Christ. In Luke 17, it says, if your brother or sister sins against you, rebuke them. And if they repent, forgive them, even if they sin against you seven times in a day and seven times. Because the heart of a believer is the heart of Christ. It is not consumed by the hurt. I hear from some people, they say, look, if someone ever upsets me, I'm done with that person. I have no room for this. No one can come and hurt me. I will not allow it. That is not the heart of Christ. God tells us, if you have a relationship with someone and they hurt you, rebuke them. Who do you rebuke? You rebuke people that you have a relationship with and that you care about. I see people that have been friends for many years, maybe 20 years, and then their children can get into a fight and all of a sudden the families are broken. They don't even want to have a relationship with each other. So when someone comes to you and and apologizes and say, I'm sorry, and repents, forgive them. If they don't know what they have done wrong, rebuke them. And they will come and ask for forgiveness. And then you forgive them. That's relationship. So you don't break relationships and stop talking to people because God says when, when it comes to forgiveness, keep forgiving. And the reason he said seven times seven 
is because it becomes habitual. It becomes your nature to forgive. So then relationships are mended and relationships can be healed. But the reason there are broken relationships is because we are not talking in open communication one with one another. We are not telling someone that they hurt us and they might not even feel it. So you need to tell them. And if they repent, you need to forgive them. Because they might not even know that they had hurt you. And God wants his children together. He wants unity. And that's why the Bible says, if two come to me in prayer, I am listening to them. I'm right there. He's a God of relationship. But the devil wants to break us apart because he wants us to be alone because then it's easy to strike. Each family is broken from other family members or even within a family, each individual is not talking to the other individual. He wants to break relationships. But God wants unity. So when you are determined and choose to forgive as you have been forgiven, you are actually healing. Don't allow the devil who messed up your past with hurt to continue to ruin your life by uh, with unforgiveness. When you don't forgive, you're always carrying that through the future. Keep that relationship with God pure and clean so that you're able to grow that relationship with Him. So we're going to pray together and we're going to be determined and make a decision today to forgive. So today, make that decision and say, I am not going to allow unforgiveness to ruin my life and to take over my future in Jesus' name. Say, God, I am your child. I belong to you, not to Satan. I confess my sins. I confess that I have not forgiven others. And sometimes I don't even see the magnitude of the sins and mistakes and hurts I have done in my life. I ask you, God, to purify me. As you have forgiven me in the past a lot and continue to forgive me, I will forgive others today. I don't want anyone leaving today without making that commitment. I, without forgiving others and living a life of forgiveness. It is like a mountain coming off your back because Satan brings a load that you don't need to keep carrying the rest of your life because you're not forgiving. And he wants to press you into depression and sadness. We thank you, God, for forgiving us. And in Jesus' name, we're going to lift you up and praise you. My Father in heaven, me and my brothers and sisters that are praying with me today, I thank you for forgiving us. And we are awaiting your blessings. We are going to live a life of forgiveness. And you're going to help us and give us power. I pray for each and every one that is praying with me. That they will spend the rest of their life with that forgiveness in their heart. Today I 
make a decision to forgive people who hurt me and I am awaiting the blessings that you have for us and may you give us the power to continue to forgive and to love others and to forgive what and forget what is behind and press on because we know that you have wonderful things coming our way and we are waiting for all the amazing things that you're going to do in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.